Welcome to the Deadly Addictions channel. Today I'm going to be talking about Venom, The Last Dance. <laughs> I swear there's a wedding song that's The Last Dance and everybody dances to it. This is not in that vein. I don't know what to say about this movie. I'm going to say a lot, I guess, in about 40 minutes, but this is a mess. I give some credit to, like, the fun of Venom in the first two movies. You know, this allusion to a connection to the Spider-Man universe was probably where I think my brain was going as I'm getting into this movie. But right away, it tells you to go fuck yourself because it doesn't want to deal with that. And I thought for years that was sort of where they were going and they could still go there but man this movie's fucked up I, I had a headache watching this movie it's disjointed and now i did we, we, after i write my notes down and i did my thing before i went to record i look i opened the wiki page and you know i do my uh i read through the thing and i don't mean to insult anybody but we have a new director. Does the blame have to go there? I don't know. Directed by Kelly Marcel. First time director. I think she worked on the other two as maybe a writer. Tom Hardy wrote this. Holy shit. I mean, I got one of those nervous smiles because this is like, like laughter too. Um, I don't like shitting on movies that much. Although it would probably do better for my channel if, I, if that was what I was looking for. But this is a bad, it's just, it, it's bad like on so many levels. It's amateurish. Um, it just feels wrong. And what the fuck is Tom Hardy doing? Is he have like real life problems? Is that interfering with his ability? I remember watching... Like one of the Bad Boys movies, and Martin Lawrence looked glassy-eyed and maybe a little heavier than normal, but it didn't like impact the story of the, you know, the fun I had watching it, but it was something like that caught my eye. In this movie, this fucking Tom Hardy is mumbling throughout the whole fucking movie, and not only is it disjointed sentences and cut scenes, but lingering shots of the camera and who's the fucking focus of the in the frame like it's just holy shit i i, I don't even know what to say a uh, couple of good things some of the band is funny but it gets ridiculous you got a dancing scene in this movie which feels so forced and so ridiculous. But at the same time, it's trying to blend comedy with Venom biting the heads off four people. And you, my brain's like all over the place. Like, hold on. I remember the first Venom movie, you know, eh, it's somewhat fun, but it tried. It's too much shit. It's going on with motorcycle bullshit and trying to make, you know, blockbuster scenes that didn't pay off well but you know like i'm a fan i like morbius it's not a great movie probably not even a good movie but it entertained me and it got me through the movie with a story that i kind of uh, you know was interested in and got into a little bit overboard acting here and there and i'm a fan of some bad shit if i'm entertained and had fun you know maybe as a if I was fucking rich and I was funding things, I would want things to be a little bit more on the, like a producer side to not put something like this out. But this movie has Tom Hardy producing, writing the story. And again, you went from the first movie to the second one with Carnage. And again, I gave it like a pass in the sense of, oh, you know, it's, it's, it's their take on Venom. But I've never liked Tom Hardy in this role. I don't like the whatever he's fucking doing with Eddie Brock. Stumbling through fucking scene after scene. Mumbling. 
it's so irritating to me because you know how great the actor is and how much money they put into these movies and this movie felt cheap it felt like they took the money out and again reading wiki yes there's uh, strikes here and there fucks with the movie i get it you know i try to give credit but as soon as this movie started with this fucking null bullshit you know Noel was created in the comics pretty recently in the scheme of things. And it's so ridiculous the lens they went to, to, um, if you're a comic book fan, to prop Venom up. And he had some success, even in passing the torch to other Venoms. Obviously, the other symbiotes were in storylines and had their thing. But there was Agent Venom, and there were interesting things they went with. But when they introduced Null in the fucking comics... It culminated with something so ridiculous that I fucking couldn't take it. I just can't. I won't bother with Venom. And if you want to know, there's this epic fight. Null comes, covers the earth in goop, and the fucking black and symbiotes are all over the symbiotes all over the place, and symbiote dragons and the heroes are there. But of course, it's a Venom book centric, even though it impacts everybody. And this fucking comic book storyline culminates in Eddie Brock taking, I think it's the Silver Surface surfboard and Thor's hammer, Mjolnir, and forging it into his fucking, oh my god, a bladed staff weapon glaive. And the top is shaped like the spider on his suit. It was fucking stupid. For comic books, it was fucking stupid. Not as stupid and shitty as, you know, some things you've seen in the past. Like, I know I'm going into comics now, but there was something that was done okay. And it's an example of my, where you might want to go. They did a com cosmic thing in the comics. It was called uh, Annihilation. And they propped up Richard Ryder, the human rocket. And he became like a cosmic force. And I didn't like it. It felt force. And I'm not a fan of it. But, like, that's where you go. And the way they culminated that fight and the things, he wasn't the, you know, one imbued. And it, look, this fucking movie doesn't know what it wants, in my opinion. It doesn't know where it wants to go. Well, no, it does, because it, it's just a fucking tease with no. But it's so ridiculous, like, a Marvel Superman ripped Carnage in the past in half, even though Carnage survived because he's in the blood, whatever the fuck. So when they send Sentry after no in the comics, no rips him in half, and Sentry's like, oh, you know, the fucking Superman of Marvel. So, such bullshit trailer bait sequel bait they want to start their sony universe bullshit you're gonna have to get a way better performance from fucking tom hardy or direct him in a way because all three movies i'm not a fan of yeah there's a couple of you know cool moments with you know the banter and the antics that are going on here and there but some of them are just flat out annoying and if your tone is going to be the Last Dance, obviously this is going to lead to the death of one of them, and oh my god, it, fucking, even the poster thing said, till death do they part, I mean, give me some fucking dialogue lines that make sense and fucking impact me, there are fucking ancillary characters that are getting fucking zoomed in on, and you fucking know why, and it's so blatantly bad, it's just fucking, in my opinion, bad. I didn't like it. There's nothing redeeming to me in a rewatch. Like, I can watch Veniverse Carnage, uh, Let There Be Carnage. Woody Harrison, you know, you're having fun. You gotta, you know, they bring a fucking character back from the fucking, uh, from the, the movie Carnage. I don't know who the fuck he is. It's it's mind boggling. Don't know who the fucking character is. He almost reminds me of um 
<laughs> One of the Wahlberg brothers in the Saw movie. Uh, uh, fucking Donnie Wahlberg, whatever the fuck his name is. Poor guy's a cop. His son gets kidnapped. Blah, 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 blah. He gets put in a trap. And like six months later, three movies later, you find his character in the Saw movie hanging from a rope with ice blocks. And he's like, I don't want to play no more. <laughs> It's this fucking guy. Whatever his fucking name is. He's supposed to have impact with this fucking horrible... Like, oh my god. And you can tell... So that's why I would like to give Tom Hardy a pass. Because there are even other actresses and actors in the movie... Who you know are good. And even if they're trying to put a great performance in... It's not working. Although this could be an editor... Purposely fucking the movie up. Why we're cutting to certain things? Why the tone is fucking ridiculous? Could this be a touch-up thing? With like, I don't know how to. I don't know how it worked in the time frames. But what Deadpool and Wolverine making fucking bank billions of dollars, whatever the fuck it did. Uh, fan service to the max. Done in my opinion, great. You know, it has flaws and we, but are they trying to uptick in the beginning? He's like talking about the multiverse shit and they just fuck you right away. Like, oh, there's no multiverse stuff and fucking, oh wow, they have a bartender from the Spider Man movie. Who gives a fuck? Horrible setups. You know, I don't know. I can't even remember good action scenes in this fucking movie. Everything is muddled together. This Area 51 base and the fucking hippie family. Like, oh my god, it's it's really amateurish in my opinion. It's almost a shame. This is a movie, you know, not in that it's to take the superhero out. But you give a directorial debut to, you know, an $8 million low-budget movie. Um, Maybe they did, maybe she did. Like, I don't fucking know. But this is bad, and it just felt bad from beginning to end. Like, why are they doing this? This scene, this setup, the payoff, what the fuck is he saying? Venom's voice. Oh, and these fucking... Silly fucking... Premises, oh, these fucking creatures are sent by Null. And they can only see you... Is it when he is fully covered? Or should I say, um, fully venom? That this these creatures, or well, creature at first, can locate the venom because venom and fucking Eddie have the codex, like this fucking Superman, Man of Steel shit, and it's what. No needs to get out of his prison. Oh, God, just talk. I got a fucking headache. And rethinking about the fucking movie. So if he becomes fully Venom, it sees that it glows, whatever. But if he goes away, it disappears, and the creature just stops, like, doesn't know what the fuck's going on. Okay, they try to give you a visual, you know, what the creature sees and stuff, but it's just fucking dumb. Killing the creature, dismembering it, it comes back together, that type thing, it's unbeatable. And then, you know, it makes a cry, it gets the attention of Nolly, sends more. Of course, Area 51 has the symbiotes under study, the ones that they've had. All this piece together is just bullshit. Throw in a hippie family that goes, uh, uh maybe from the middle of the movie to the end sort of where Eddie Brock's gonna get somewhere and oh my god he's fucking stumbling through the movie and then he puts on a suit to win in ja to, to win the uh, casino stuff because Venom's gonna help him they got 20 bucks they gotta make money on it classic situation so he approaches a guy he's in his fucking Bahamas suit you know Eddie Brock is looking all fucked up Stumbling around, mumbling, 
The guy pees on his foot. Venom knocks him out. He takes a suit. And then he looks dapper. And oh god, you know, is this the fucking impact of what Deadpool does? I don't know, but of course he's man of the year, sexiest man of the year bullshit. Get in the casino for another bullshit scenario to find the, the woman for who owns the shop in the first movie. Second movie, maybe. Who the fuck knows? And she invites him up to clean up or whatever, and they dance. And Venom is dancing. It looks fucking horrible. Uh, you know, now mind you, this whole premise and setup is null, is universe destroying, universe ending entity. And that's what you know from the comics, and that's what they say here. He was here before the universe when the Big Bang or the light in the comics. It's like the Celestials um, well, uh, shined the light on him and he cut one of their fucking heads off with a special sword, which is a fucking a whole comic thing. But he gets out of his prison. He will seek to destroy life everywhere, that type of shit. And right away, the movie's doesn't feel like it means anything, has any fucking stakes. In the beginning, the mumbling Tom Hardy, Eddie Brock nonsense goes on, and he hears shit, whatever, lethal protector, breaks into this place, and there's dogs in cages being used for fights. And of course, the four fucking, you know, Mexican or whatever thugs come in, and he's trying to warn them all for their benefit, that type of thing. Like, But the whole scenario is stupid. His performance is just... I can't, like, put into words. Like, we know he's a great actor. And if it's what he chose to do for all three movies... Because this is not just... A, it's a little more... It's a little worse in this movie. But... At least in the other parts of the movie, some of the bumbling and some of the antics had clear vocalized lines to read, to hear, and it kind of made sense in the impact of things. For me, this movie is so disjointed in my brain, it just doesn't make sense. A lot of it is just over, overdone shit that they've done over and over to all the movies. And when you have a premise like, holy shit, we have a entity that narrates the beginning of the fucking movie. It's so, to me, it was so bad. It was, it was the hallmarks of a bad fucking movie, the way it started. And I went into this happy and fucking ready to fucking go on a fun ride. And I knew the other two movies weren't great. Enjoy some of it, you know, for what it was, you know, their take on Venom. But this cements that, this whole trilogy is shit. It's just, the shit ends here, n no real focus, and it feels like the intention is just a bait for maybe sequels or something, but it really didn't tie in what Spider-Man did. You know, what Morbius tried to do. You know, you're going to bring in, you had the multiverse thing, even if it's not a success in Marvel's scheme of things, it's an element that's there. It's been in the comics for fucking ever. It works amazingly at times. You can use it to your benefit. I don't know what the fuck you're doing. Oh man, I just don't have a, you know, a good mindset with this movie. Recapping it in my brain again. I don't know where you go with this. Are you setting up that Sony's universal fucking landscape is going to deal with Null? I don't even know what his fucking nickname is, Null the Conqueror, whatever the fuck. And what are you, what, what's the, what's going to happen? Him, Morbius, you're going to get the Sinister Six that you never really went to? To get into Spider-Man. And all the wiki shit with Tom Hardy and uh, Tom Holland. Like, yeah, of course they would love to do it together. And by the way, again, when you know how good Tom Hardy is and you see Tom Holland's 
portrayal of Spider-Man. Not that I appreciate everything he does, just like Tom Hardy in that sense, but he's not becoming, you know, pretty good actor that fits Spider-Man well. Hugely successful, especially his impact in the MCU. This felt like you just cheaped out on everything. The special effects, Venom's integration with Eddie Brock, he's shooting off little limbs and his head there. It's just, it just looks fucking bad. It doesn't feel like it's uh, a third movie in the franchise. It just doesn't. You know what it feels like? Yeah, it does feel like a third movie in a long-forgotten franchise, like the Crow movies. I did a thing on the new Crow. I love the first one, but there's like four fucking Crow movies that came out. I think even Edward Furlong is even one of them. Oh, my God. But this feels like, you know, 11 years later, director, internet, you know, streaming, they made a fucking Venom movie. Just so happens that Tom Hardy did it, and his life is fucked up, and he, you know, he's not really putting effort into it. He's, it's just a, you know, maybe he's great at portraying a stumbling, bumbling, drunk for more than half of the movie, hungover, just non-interesting character. Venom has to save most of the situations. It gets too much. We're going to have him merge at the end because, like I said, I'm all over the place, but this fucking movie is all over the place. So, you know, beginning of the movie, he's on the run as the fugitive again because he's back in his fucking timeline, whatever the fuck. The Area 51 and Strickland and fucking Dr. Payne. I don't know what the fuck they chose some of these actors for. They're, they're great, but whatever they did with them in this movie did not work for me. You find out that they've got symbiotes and they've got a guy from the second movie that no one will fucking remember at all. And he's a mean, you know, they got to go to him, talk, get the symbiote to come out. It just looks bad. First off, the one good thing is uh, the side doctor, <laughs> side doctor, uh, you know, um, like I said, some of the camera shots and lingering focuses you know what they were setting it up for but um clock backo um beautiful woman um you can see where she was going with her arc and obviously um so maybe i'll give credit in that effect because her symbiote looked good um in in what it tried to do in its purpose where the other ones were like okay so they Middle of the movie, things chasing them, trying to find them. Eddie and Venom understand the, the consequences. Uh, you know, he has the codex. End of the movie, they get to Area 51. They take Venom or Eddie. They've got him in prison. And he's with the other symbiotes there. And the guy from the second fucking movie. What are you doing here? Like, who the fuck are you? It was my fucking thing. Like, okay. Yeah, you. I'm going to go back and watch... Uh, you know, a pretty bad movie with some fun in it to remember who the fuck this guy was that was left for dead. And I'm surprised that he has a connection to the symbiote. Like, oh, fuck off. And then you got to get the main creature there. So, you know, as the shit's hitting the fan and the, the military guy, I don't know if he's like an equal, but he it's clearly under the doctor's um, purview, the whole symbiote thing. But if you were stupid, shady, dark shadow, monitor bullshit, comic book scene that they did bad, he get, he gets given power over the place. They're going to kill Eddie. The symbiote bursts off the chick. Um, clock back out, whatever the fuck. And they merge and it finds them and it's just fucking stupid. Hey, you know what? We got a universe ending thing. And I know I'm going to fucking get the attention of a unkillable fucking life ending creature because it kills symbiotes like nothing. I'm going to dance with this chick and let, this, let the codex shine. Uh, you know, and again, like I said at the beginning, when you got the four thugs that come and he's trying to plead with them 
it ends with venom biting their heads off and eating them. Now, you can pull that off in a Deadpool movie, like Deadpool fucking with Wolverine's bones and killing everybody. It just doesn't work here. You know, there were parts of the first movie where I said, you know what, this should have been a dark, brooding, shadow-filled movie where, you know, you put your money at the end and you go for broke with some of the effects, but the pacing and the, the scariness, you just blew it. In the second movie, yeah, you just want to have spectacle and fun. You got Carnage. Noah's bullshit. He's not in the fucking movie for a cutscene here and there, end cutscene. Yeah, who gives a fuck? Like, I'm going to watch Captain America, Thor, join up with the Sony universe to fight Null. No, what are we going to get? Let's get the three Spider-Man, because we'll have them fucking come in from every other universe. And... Um, maybe we'll get, um, you know, uh, what was it, Green Goblin, we'll get Sandman, no, no, did he cure Sandman in that movie, uh, Doc Ock, and, yeah, it'll be, a, it'll be a blockbuster fucking movie, and don't give it to this chick, sorry, again, I don't like shitting on people, but Kelly, Marcel, the story sucked, which you're part of, and the directing, in my opinion, was horrible, unless you had an editor who... Just really wanted to fuck with this movie. Uh, Mark Sanger is the editor. The music sucked. Not really impressive. Unless you talk about the hippie scene where they're singing. <laughs> it's just David Bowie's song. Um, Ground Control to Major Tom. Which I fucking love. And I might have smiled. You know, when it, when the... It happened in the movie because Venom is enjoying it, but Eddie's like, what the fuck is going on? Shoot me. You know, but it, if it was all well done and, you know, smoothed out, like I always said that the Mobius movie was probably a mess that someone really good at editing went in, good at his job, maybe loved the project and did his best. And it's not a great movie. It's not probably a good movie, but... Enjoyable enough for me to understand from the comic books into the fucking live action, Morbius, the whole um, angle. This is supposed to end with, you know, your heartstrings being pulled, this buddy duo, the lethal protector, and it feels like a dud. It just feels flat. It doesn't inspire me. It doesn't invoke, you know, emotions. I'm like, holy shit, it's over. When are we going to fucking do something else? That's not a good feeling. It's not what I want to come in here and say. I would totally be honest and say, look, this movie's not that great, but I fucking had fun. I can't. I was frustrated and aggravated as I'm watching an amazing cast. Let's just say it's an amazing cast. I don't know how to fucking pronounce that guy's name, but maybe I'll try. Um... She would tell Ijotua. It's fucking amazing and stuff. <laughs> you know, I don't know who June Temp. To, okay, what they try, what they tried to do. I'm, I'm just gonna say my opinion is this director is fucking not good, and they need more time. Because if you've got such a great cast with these performances that are all over the place, really. Weird framing scenes, body language, it just doesn't feel right. It just feels like a failure on so many levels that the enjoyment factor for what it is. And yeah, I can't even... Okay, so maybe the hippies singing thing, but it's it's funny for the cringe and for what it's trying to do. You got a hippie group singing... Ground control to major time. And then it's like, he's, he can't take it. But Venom's loving it. Okay, I'll give it that. But when you want to multiply that from all the other things that are supposed to be silly, fun, and it just doesn't add up and stack up. It feels lopsided and, again, disjointed. Like, this movie should have been focused on a certain area, like your tone, 
We've got to go a little dark, be a little less funny, make these stakes feel real, and make this ending mean something. Because, again, you're at the end of this fucking movie, all the sim let's say five symbiotes are free, they're trying to help, all of a sudden they're explaining, no, we're the good guys. <laughs> yeah, in this situation, you're the good guys, okay? Fine. So let's give them the, you know happy end you know good and you know fighter and then good guy and yeah most of them fucking die and that's where i like uh the clock um symbiote chick and the doctor's fucking backstory culminates here for no fucking reason so fucking stupid okay so here's the premise this doctor had a twin brother, and when they were younger, they were in this fucking silly fucking dialogue with each other, laying on the beach, holding hands or something bullshit. No, that's a, and storm's coming, so he's got to say something poetically stupid, and they run from the storm, lightning strikes them, the brother dies, she's got scars. That's it. And... Unlike maybe Jane Foster in the Thor movies, where she was connecting these disturbances to, um, you know, the the portals to Asgard and shit. I see how, I see no way this connects to symbiotes, her purpose, and, and fucking anything. However, okay, let's say it does lead to being a scientist and going into shit, fine. But at the end of this fucking movie, they're running... And things are blowing up and stuff. And they're, they're connecting her running on the beach with her brother to her and this fucking assistant lab clock chick. And she snaps her fucking symbiote. She's, she's put in her pocket a little piece and it helps her save her. It's fucking ridiculous. By the way, I did like to call her in that. I thought it was, you know... There are moments here and there, look, it's a fucking movie, but it's one of the most amateurish attempts at a superhero movie. I mean, I mean, yeah, like, I talk about the opening for Wolverine Origins, which is still like my favorite Marvel opening ever. Logan as a kid, growing, running through the, the trees. With his brother Sabretooth and whatever. That movie goes fucking bonkers. But I can watch it ten times and have fun. I don't know where the fun is in this. For me even to try to rewatch it. To even watch it with friends. Like sometimes I kind of <laughs> force a friend or so. Like hey you know let's watch this. I need to fucking piece together why I feel certain ways about this. And I try to keep quiet or whatever. I don't know. Venom, the last dance. I mean, this it was it. This, you're, you're ending the trilogy in the most amateurish fucking way on almost every level. A lot of times I come on and I might not really like a movie, but I can say, oh, you know what? Um, you know what? Alien Romulus. That movie's fucking ridiculous. But it has some amazing shots for the budget and what they did. And I'll even go into Morbius, the same thing. Doing the best you can with what you got, this feels like a wasted effort. Again, could it be strikes and, you know, whatever, find people's real life problems? You know, I get it. You know, I hated shitting on um, Zack Snyder with his family shit, but you know, I, I'm not going to lie about the movies that he makes and in any case. This is Sony's third movie of the Venom uh, franchise, sort of. Yeah, kind of had me enjoying the moments in those first two movies that give the movie a pass for me in the rewatch sense. If, you know, and, you know, I like the Venom character. I grew up a comic book nerd, so I might even have one of the... First or second appearances of Venom in one of my fucking things and Todd McFarlane. I don't know how to I don't know how to look and even see positive reviews for this. If anybody's looking at this, they gotta give it like you know, now that I'm looking.
Yeah, I see it's at the bottom. Uh, a lot of one out of fives. Um, I wish I could defend it in the fun sense. I don't mind saying, yeah, the movie's bad, but man, I had a lot of fun. I don't mind. As a matter of fact, I probably say that too much because I like some bad shit apparently but I want to be able to rewatch this trilogy now that it's just it's you know, it's almost uh, it's not as bad okay but like Star Wars I watched The Force Awakens I still I give it a pass and I can rewatch it and Daisy Ridley's amazing in that I love that element but the, the next two movies just destroy everything it just doesn't Register even me no more that it even exists. This is bad and for me because not only do I not want to see this shit, I don't care about Tom Hardy and this fucking world. He's he he's crossing that threshold of annoying to me where I don't want to even see him and stuff. And the last time I can remember this happening was I don't know who the fucking actor is, but I'm watching uh. Prometheus and one of the two main they're a couple they're going to search for the engineers Charlie maybe is is the the boyfriend husband he gets infected by David I fucking hate that actor not that he's not good or bad it doesn't matter it doesn't matter it's one of those things it slipped through my defenses and all my biases whatever clicked I don't want to fucking see him in anything and they just don't care Oh, when he takes the helmet off, breathes the air, and he laughs. I just want to fucking shut the movie off. And Prometheus, another one I give a pass to, and then fucking Covenant's garbage. This third movie ruins, I'm sorry, it lowers the value and the fun factor of these three movies. You should have balanced the tone better, had a more streamlined story with a fucking coherent, very intense dialogue movie. Now, you could have had the fun and stuff here and there, but this creature is fucking around on Earth, killing things. They can't kill it. We have this fucking off with this woman and her twin brother who died. That comes back at the end. You have a fucking military guy who finally gets the power that you didn't know you fucking wanted. And it just fucking doesn't make sense to me. This should have been something seeded and well fucking thought out. The foundation should be there from the first one and make sense. If it's there from the first one, where well, you're just fucking it up and then you're trying to cobble everything together in this movie, it doesn't work for me. And I'm going to have a feeling it's not working for anybody. There's nothing even charming about Tom Hardy in this fucking movie. I can always find something that he's, you know, find nothing interesting either the end of the fucking movie the symbiotes get loose whatever the fuck happens Venom has to make a decision because you find out earlier in the movie very early I think that because Venom saved Eddie's life because Eddie died in the first one he had stabbed through the chest or some bullshit and bonded with him the Codex is part of them, and that if one of them dies permanently, that Codex disappears and cannot be used to free Null. So, instead of the movie starting off with a sacrifice that is recapped and, um, go, you know, you go through the movie in a different time linear fashion... No, at the end of the movie, we get fucking, like, six seconds of fucking Tom Hardy looking at the Statue of Liberty, which should have been fucking heart pull, heart strength pulling fucking moments of this movie culminating, and it meant nothing. You felt nothing. It was just gone in the wind. Fucking unbelievable. <clears throat> I don't... I don't even know how to fucking put it into words. Like, I understand... I love the Lord of the Rings, and people don't like the Hobbit so much, the Hobbit trilogy. I love the Hobbit trilogy. I understand it's not as good, but I, I could watch them and have fun. I don't care if it's stretched out and blended. To me, they did it good enough that I have fun, and I'm along for the ride. 
this movie just fucks up the other two movies in my opinion it just it takes away the achievements that they even accomplish for someone like me right and i'm so fucking easy to please it's not even funny oh god if I, look at my podcast with all my nonsense so i'm gonna end this here venom the last dance not fun for me not interesting it fucking should have pulled on my heartstrings and all it did was make me frustrated annoyed not want to watch tom hardy and shit maybe subconsciously i feel like he you know he just fucking walked through like a zombie and he, something was going on like i don't know but if i see the other actors that are great in this movie and the things they did i might go director you know new director just didn't have the impact it didn't work out oh man anyway i guess that's my thoughts on venom the last dance uh what a disappointment for me mm. oh don't wait for no though maybe that'll change things when that happens anyway my best to you and yours take care everybody <laughs>